Welcome to part two in the probabilistic forecasting series. Last week we did some plotting. This week uh, we'll see what we get to. I'm going to open up the to-do list. All right, so last week we did the plotting and we have quite a few more things to do. So as a reminder, what we're trying to do is we're trying to do not point forecasts, but probabilistic forecasts. So that means that for every day, we're going to have a distribution of forecasts. And we're going to do that using a library called ng-boost. This is a library I've never used before, so I'll be learning a little bit as we go. Let's see. There's some things on here I think we'll keep. Some of them we might end up removing. Maybe we'll also add a couple items. And uh, I could see us rearranging a few of these items. So we'll just take it one step at a time. Uh, there's no rush. I'm excited to just kind of take it slow in this series. And if you have any questions, uh, please put them in the comments. If there's something that you'd like to go into more detail on, um, feel free to add that or message me privately. All right, there is a change in the data that I made. So to get that change, go to my website, xvzf2.xyz. Go to Walmart's M5 data. And this very top link here, m5statesales.csv, is the one that we want to re-download. Uh, what happened is that I did pre-processing on the training set that Kaggle gives, but it also has a test set. And I didn't do any pre-processing on the test set, I just decided that we would clip our training set into train and test. And I think that's that's just going to be easy, easier to work with. So this is, again, the M5 state sales CSV, the one that's 124 kilobytes and has three series. Those three series are California, Texas, and Wisconsin. So you can either download it by just clicking on it, and it will download. Uh, what I normally do, though, is I copy the link and do wget to download. So you should have this M5 state sales CSV. That's the old file. Uh, just remove that. And wget uh, the new file. So just looking at this, we've got our data. I'm just looking at it by date. It goes from the beginning of 2011. and goes to about the middle of 2016. And we have our state IDs, California, Texas, and Wisconsin in there. All right, so I wanted to open up the main.py file. Let's take a look at this. All right, the first thing that catches my eye is all the warnings we're getting from Flake 8. So if I just put my cursor here on line two, at the very bottom of my tor terminal, you'll see uh, Flake 8 is giving this warning. It's saying that uh, from plot 9 import star used, unable to detect undefined names. And sure enough, as we go down, we see lots of the functions that we, or methods that we import from plot 9, are not recognized by Flake 8. So, um, better practice would probably be to, instead of do an import star, put something like theme set, comma, gg plot, uh, things like that. I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, that's something maybe I would do if I was just about to wrap up the script. And uh, that's, that's only a maybe. I'm not even sure I would, I, would, I would do that. I'm really just not too concerned about that, that error. So we do have some errors here. I might end up showing you how to ignore those with Flake 8. And uh, maybe we can go ahead and fix them with, with black. Yeah, and so that import error that we're getting is this F405 error. So we might just go ahead and work on that now. Um, but before we do, I, let's just look at this a little bit longer. This all looks good. 
All right, so line 26 to 29. This was a copy and paste from a previous file. The main thing I wanted to grab was the plotting. We're going to delete this and make it better. Uh, this, The script this was pulled from was to work on a single series. What we want to do in this video is we want to work on multiple series. That's California, Texas, and Wisconsin. So let's go ahead and delete this. And delete this save it and let's work on fixing well not fixing let's work on ignoring the problem let's wor work on ignoring these flake eight errors so that we don't have to um have these distracting us so uh there's a couple ways to do this uh let me go ahead and just go to the flake eight documentation page if you haven't installed flake eight go ahead and, and pip install it um I'm a huge fan of Flake 8. I think it's nice to, to do some, some linting. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the configuration of Flake 8. So right now if I were just to run Flake 8, it's going to pump out all the warnings that our NeoVim text editor was showing us. So here's that 405 error. In fact, we can go ahead and pipe this to uh, ripgrep and have ripgrep just look for F405. And it will highlight all those 405 errors that we are having. We want to ignore those. So uh, you can go ahead and read through the documentation. What we're going to do is we're going to make a, let's see, it says in here a setup.config file. Where does it say that? Setup.config. So let's go ahead and copy that, do touch to make a new file, and paste setup.config, and go into this file. And it, it'll go over, if you, if you read this page, you'll see the, the format. It's a any format. So it looks uh, similar to Toml, or maybe the right way to say it is that Toml looks similar to any. Any was before Toml. But you've got to have this flake eight header, and we're just going to do it ignore. So we're just going to take this this top part here. Uh, that's not the error we want to ignore, though. We want to ignore F. Oh gosh, four hundred five. Is that what it was? F four hundred five. And um, we're also going to make sure flake eight knows that this is the file format we want to use. So flake eight has a few different. Um, any files that you can you can make you can make a dot flake eight, a setup dot config, and a tox dot any. We chose setup dot config, so we just want to make sure that it knows that's the that's a configuration file we want to use and and nothing else. So, um, for example, if you look in, in flake eight's help file, you'll see this configuration flag. It says dash dash config. Path to the config file that will be the authoritative config source. This will cause Flake 8 to ignore all other configuration files. So we're going to run that really quick. We're going to just cover our bases and make sure that um, Flake 8 know, knows which file we're going to use. So Flake 8 config and it's setup.config. There we go. So just ran that. Uh, we can tell it's working because there is no more um, of these F405 errors. Let's see. Is there anything else here that we want to ignore for now? I'm just reading through these. So F403 says from plot nine import star, unable to detect and define names. I think I might want to ignore that one for now. Continuation line, <clears throat> continuation line over indented for visual indent. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, let's go ahead and add E127 and E124. E124 
E127 and E124. I think that'll be good. NVIM uh, setup.config E127 and E124. All right, and we can run click eight again. Oh, and also F403, I want to ignore. I think, I think that's good. I want all the rest of these errors. So let's look back at main.py. We'll see that lots of those, well, this uh, line two used to have this uh, warning symbol by it, and that's clear now. But we're still getting some of these errors, missing white space after, after comma. So we're gonna go ahead and fix these with ale fix. All right, what's this say? No fixers have been defined. Try ale fix suggest. All right, so what this is telling me is that I have an old Vim configuration file. So we're going to hop into my Vim config and make sure I've got an ale fixer in there. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So it's in my dot .files, nvim config, init.vim. Go down to ale. So yeah, sure enough, I don't have a fixer. I've got linters, but not a fixer. Let me just, I can't remember the syntax off the top of my head. I'm going to have to do a help here. Help ale fix. Um, configuration. There you go. All right. So the fix is a lot like the linter. So our fixer, what I like to use for a fixer is black. So we'll just put black here. Black is another command line utility. You can just run black on a file and it will fix it. But I like uh, Vim to fix it. So I don't have to go back to the command line and run black. That looks good to me. Yeah, th so this was supposed to be a video on probabilistic forecasting, and now, now it's a video on linting and, and fixing. So, uh, but I think this is good. I think it's, it's good to see some of this. So this is L fixers. That looks good to me. If it doesn't, we'll come back in and we'll fix it. All right. So now we should be able to run ale fix, and it should find black. Perfect. All right, it just fixed our file for us. And our git gutter is showing us that these are changes that we've made since we last did a git commit. So everything is working great. So now we have a clean script, 23 lines. You know what, before I start running this, I want to open up Tmux, get some of these going. So Tmux, let's see, I should have that shell command where I'm looking at files. Yeah, I think, let's keep this going for now. Let's pop up this file every time we change it. All right. So I've got two TMX sessions. One is the Vim, Vim terminal and one is going to be for some of the shell stuff that we do for now. Maybe we'll change that a little bit later. So 
I'm going to open up my Python terminal and start running these things. This is send to window. Just pushing these down. All right. So here is our plot. Um, just some observations. We've got California here. Texas is yellow. Wisconsin is blue. It looks like, I mean, this is, this is a pretty standard time series from the retail, the real retail time series I've seen. This looks pretty standard where around the holiday season you have these dips. This is probably, uh, maybe they're closed on Christmas. Um, in fact, we could verify that if we wanted to, but it's it's something Yeah, it's got to be Christmas. That's got to be the 25th. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Um no other big observations here that the time series do look seasonal. Um that's also pretty standard with retail or retail like time series. Usually with, with highly seasonal time series, something like lags, seasonal lags, end up being pretty competitive benchmarks. So if you're running a maybe a, a complex model, you want to make sure that your model is at least beating lags. The thing that mess ups the thing that messes up lags are these these holiday drops. But other than, other than that for standard for standard time series where things are going as usual, those lags can be pretty effective. Yeah, I guess no other, no other comments here. In fact, maybe we should go ahead and start. Uh, maybe we'll make a day name feature. And let's make a, a really simple train and test set and see what we get with some lags. So let's go ahead and dive into that. All right, line seven. This is getting us year right now. Mm. I don't like how this looks. I'm going to make make flick eight angry again and uh, indent this the way I want to indent it. E one one three. I'm going to add this to flake. I just don't I don't want to look at those. All right, dang, there is a lot of like eight uh, issues with uh, with this chaining. Oh, I did the wrong error. I did one, two, I think I did one, two, three, not one, two, eight. Let me actually keep this open so I can see what's going on here. Uh, wrong one. Here we go, E, one, two, There we go. So, wow, I've got a lot of ignores here. 
I just like to do chaining. So, and uh, every time I run black, it's gonna it's gonna mess up this this visual I've got going on right here. But now that I think about it, I don't think I've ever modified black to ignore this this specific kind of thing. Um, I should because I'm always I run black and it fixes everything. It's great, but then it it ruins my assigns here. All right, um, and the reason I like it is it just makes it easy to to copy and paste in Vim. Just Y Y and then and then put. So and I'm always making new columns. Love chaining, and I think it's so clear, um, so clear to read. All right, so we want to make a day. So day equals lambda df. It's going to look a lot like what we've got above. Oh, day name is wrong here. All right, so day name added Saturday and Sunday. So this is our, our new column here, Saturday, Sunday. Um, it looks like just Saturday and Sunday, but, but all of our day names will be there. So now we have a day name. That'll make it uh, nice for our lags. So that took care of that. The other thing we wanted to do was make a training set. So I would say let's hold out three weeks and we'll try to forecast those last three weeks. Yeah, I like that. So I'm going to make a variable train max date. So we're going to grab this df raw and grab ds. ds is our date time object. Date is a, I think it's a string right now. So we definitely want to grab ds and grab the max. Oof, what happened here? Ah, I wanted this to be df raw. You know what? Let's go ahead and just make all of this df raw for now. There we go. So that's our max date. Um, so we want to get three weeks before that. So we're going to need time delta. If we want time delta, we're going to have to import date time. So we'll do that. And we could make an, a new line here for the max. Now this is how I want to do it. Let's go ahead and just subtract date time, time delta. And let's do three weeks. All right, that looks good. That'll be our max, uh, our max date in our training set. So it makes it, let's make our data frame of training data. Query. Let's see, we want ds to be less than or equal to our train max date. Let's see. I think that'll I think that'll be good. 
Um, you know, since we're going to be making lags, maybe some moving averages, I'm going to want to plot that data to see how it looks. So I'm going to I'm going to append some zeros on here for now. Uh, this will represent I guess NAs for for our test set. So when we plot, we can we can just kind of have placeholders there. Yeah. So I guess I'm just thinking out loud. If this doesn't make sense, uh, maybe it'll make sense um, when we get to plotting. But uh, I'm going to make a test set of just zeros. Uh, so this isn't really a true test set. I guess I should say this is this is just adding zeros. This is just adding zeros onto our training set. So maybe df test is is a bad name. It's just the first thing that came to my mind. So df raw. Let's grab uh, the complement of what we got above. So up here, we're doing less than or equal to. Let's so I'll just copy and paste this. Whoop. Let's change this to greater than. And this is going to be all zeros. What's it saying? Missing white space. All right. All right. All those all those cells are zeros. And we've got what is this? Oh yeah, we can fix this. E501. So Flake is, is getting on us for E501. Let's ignore that one also. That's probably my favorite error to ignore, E501. We have uh, big screens. I don't understand why uh, we're still holding ourselves to this uh, 80 character limit. It just doesn't make sense. So I'm very happy ignoring E501. Um, all right, so that looks good. We've got our train set, a test set that is just sales times zero. That should make plotting look nice. And let's glue these together. So we're going to take our train set and append. DF test zero. All right. Okay. So now on to making some of the time series features. We're going to do the same thing that I did in a previous script, but we're going to be grouping by, by day of week. And by state ID. So let's go ahead and make a horizon and seasonality variable. So horizon equals 21 because that is uh, seven days times three weeks. And we're going to make a seasonality. That means that um, seasonality is this idea where your business has some kind of regular pattern. So maybe if you're looking at sales on the monthly level, 
you would difference or you'd have a really small residual when you re, um, difference January of this year over January of next year. In our case, we've got daily data, and I'm assuming that Mondays all look similar. So if we subtracted this Monday, this Monday sales from last Monday sales, we'll have a, a small residual relative to if we differenced uh, this Monday on Saturday. So I think that in this data set, assuming a seasonality of seven days, uh, makes a lot of sense. Um, let's see. So this is the tricky part. This, this is kind of the meat of the video. Is, is doing some of these rolling calculations or uh, grouped group transformations. So the way, let's, let's make sure we've got these variables here. Okay, so we are going to do, we're just gonna do this piece by piece. DF assign, the first thing that we're gonna do is lags. So we're gonna do lag sales And this is going to be grouped by state ID. So the reason why we group by state ID is that we don't, if you think about our data set, we've got California, Wisconsin, and Texas all, all together. If we were to lag without uh, respecting state ID, then we'll probably have lags running into each other. Uh, which we don't want. Uh, we don't want Texas lags to pick up on California lags. So we're, we're grouping by state ID. We're going to grab sales and transform. transform by shifting by the horizon. So this is lagged by 21 days. Let's see if this is working the way we think. Great. So you'll see this column, lag sales, you're gonna see NAs or NAN. That means that the lag is uh, there's just there's just nothing for that lag to pick up on until we're 21 days past past the start. All right, and we'll do we'll do a graphical check on check on this once we get a couple more of these. We'll we'll plot it and make sure that everything's making making sense. Okay, so we have lag sales, which is a 21 day shift in the horizon. Uh, this could be a really good feature that we're going to pass to ng-boost. Let's, let's go ahead and add some more. So I'm going to put these parentheses around here to do a multi-line multi -line edits here. So let's do like sales two, and here we're just going to shift the horizon, but we're going to shift it by. Uh, actually, let's not shift the horizon. Let's base everything off of this this lag sales here. We're going to start ignoring sales uh, altogether. So the idea here is that we're, we have this uh, forecast horizon of 21 days. And if we make our features off of this lag sales, which is a 21-day shift, 
that means we don't have to worry about data leaking in the time series. And so data leaking is this idea that you're going to be using a value that won't be present when you're actually trying to forecast. Um, it sounds like a, a simple thing to avoid, uh, but I've just seen it happen so many times in practice. Uh, it's something that's easily missed, where maybe you're only lagging by, by one week, and you're basing your features off of a one-week lag, but you really need to forecast you know, two, three, four weeks. And so in all your, your training and development, your model looks great, and that's because you're using data that won't be available to you when you actually have to forecast and put it, put it in production. So one way around this, and maybe there's better ways, uh, but one way around this is to start off with this big lag, the lag that's uh, at least as large as the forecast horizon that you're trying to, uh, to forecast to, and then build all of your features off of that main lag. So lag sales is now, for our purposes, sales. Uh, sales uh, doesn't exist anymore. We don't want, we don't want data leaking. So we're just going to work off of those, those lag sales. And so we're going to use lag sales. Since we're using lag sales, we're just going to shift lag sales back by a, another um, seven days. That looks about right. And let's do this one more time. All right, Flickate is telling me I need to add. I need to add spaces here. All right, so this is all lags. Um, let's add. Moving averages are pretty pretty common in time series. Uh, same with exponentially moving. Exponential, expo exponentially weighted moving averages. So let's add a couple of those. Um, let's just call this MA1. We'll group by state ID. Use like sales again. Uh, let's see, what do we need to change here? Lambda x, x dot shift. It's not shift anymore. Mm. This is going to, let's see, rolling. Yeah, not really, rolling. Um, with our window equal to seasonality. Um, and we're taking the mean. Uh, another thing you can do here is, is other than the mean, you can do standard deviation. I'm not going to do that right now. But that, that that could that could be a really useful feature. Make sure there's no errors. All right. Mm. I don't like those parentheses down there. Um, okay, now we're going to do the exponential weighted moving average. We'll call that EWM1. We'll let it match our moving average syntax. Group by state, use like sales, transform, not rolling. We're going to do EWM. Unexpected window. Oh, yeah, EWM doesn't have window. We are going to do span. That means we have a exponential, a seven-day exponential moving average.
Yeah, I think that looks good. Uh, let's just make a new variable here. We'll call this df role. And I think we're ready to plot. And I want to zoom in for this plot. So our current plot is, is pretty large. It goes back pretty far. I just want to see some of the most recent months. Um, let's make a data frame just for plotting. So we'll call this df plotting. And it's going to be our df role um, with just the last few days, uh, maybe the last couple of months. Dates greater than or equal to, since this is a string, I've got to quote it uh, 2015. 1201. I want to get I want to get December in there just so we can see the mess that holidays make uh, for these lags. If I don't get the holidays in there, it'll look like these lags always work, and and there's no reason to ever do anything other than a lag. <laughs> um, okay. So yeah, I just want to make sure we've got that in there. So the same theme, same color palette. This is now DF plotting. Um, that looks good. Let's just stick with the lines for now. Hmm. Let me start with just one, not AWS. AES. AES is aesthetic, so we're going to pass the aesthetics. Um, y equals lag sales. And I'm going to gray this out. I think the one year is going to be too long. Let's do one month. And we're going to still need to keep a geo line. Well, this is going to be for our main time series. I think everything else there looks good. Do I want to change the name? So let's get our script to look for this file now. So we're probably going to modify this quite a bit. Might as well um, set it up here. Let's just try that again, just to make sure that's working. OK, that's it. So this is, this is our lag sales. So this is shifted 21 days or three weeks. And the pattern looks pretty good. Uh, you'll see the zeros down there. That's just because. Um, you know what, I do want to keep the points. I'm going to change things a little bit. And 
There we go. I think that's a better look. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm going to add some lags in here so you can see how the other lags uh, do. Uh, forecasting. Uh, maybe forecasting is the wrong word. What we're really doing here is time series feature engineering. That's, that's the purpose here. So that was lag sales. Let's add. Let's copy this. Paste. Lag sales 2. And lag sales 3. Yeah, look at that. So the lags are doing a pretty good job, I would say, capturing capturing this time series. Um, this is for California. Um, there's all right at Texas. Uh, probably not so good for Wisconsin. You also notice the different uh, peaks down here. That's because our lag sales is a 21-day shift. So that's this first peak. And then our lag sales two is seven days after. So that's that second peak and lag sales three is the third peak. So that's what explains these, di what explains these dips here. All right, that looks good. Now let's see what this uh, moving average and exponentially weighted moving average look like. So we'll add uh, MA1 and EWM1. All right, so you'll see these new, they almost look like trend lines in here. It's new kind of trend lines. So moving averages, the longer you go back, the more of a trend line they are. Like you can do a, a a monthly moving average where you're averaging over a month. Um, let's do, let's actually change our moving average. Let's have our moving average group by day also. So instead of doing a moving average of like um, looking back would be like Saturday, Friday, Thursday, um, in this, those contiguous groups, let's look at Saturday and the previous Saturday and the previous Saturday and do mo moving averages of that. So let's go back up to our moving average calculation. This is going to be really easy. All we need to do is change our group by. So the group by here is state and we're going to do not just state but day. Okay. Uh, that's looking pretty good. So it's amazing, at least to me, I think I think it's it's pretty amazing to see that lags and week over week moving averages and exponential exponentially weighted moving averages uh, get this kind of pattern captured. So when we do benchmarks, we want to make sure that we're doing benchmarks that are competitive, uh, simple methods that seem to be pretty decent forecasters. Um, they don't work in all cases. You'll see they work best for California. Uh, Texas, they do, they do okay. Wisconsin, it's a little bit more of a mess, but still, um, still not too bad. We still have a pretty tight band here. I don't think anyone would say that these forecasts are... Uh, not sensible. So I think those these will be good features to include in, in our model. All right, let's go ahead and move on. Actually, let's look at our to-do list. Um, Group stats. That's kind of that's kind of what I meant by these lags. Um, so we'll say group stats lags, ma, exponentially weighted moving average. 
uh, variations, covariations. I don't really want to do um, ACF right now. Maybe, maybe that'll make it later in the series. Uh, maybe not at all, but we're gonna skip that for now. You know, I guess I guess these time series predictors are kind of like these group stats. Yeah, let's go ahead and just. No, I think it... I'm going back and forth here. Uh, when I'm thinking time series predictors, I guess I'm thinking more like um, holidays. Uh, things that are external to the time series. Holidays, um, promos. Uh, we'll probably not use promos. Um, but we could pull in holidays uh, at a later time. So let's go ahead and mark this off. Predictors we can add for later. Probabilistic forecasting by group. I think it's about time for that. Um, but you know what? This has been this has been kind of a long video. Maybe we call it good here. I'm trying to think. Hmm. You know what? Let's just keep going. This is going to be a longer video. All right. So we want to use ng boost. And I have not used ng boost before. So we're going to look at the documentation here. Installation. Uh, before this video, I did install ng boost, so I wasn't taking up the time there. Usage. Let's just make sure everything is functioning. So I'm just going to take this and run it. All right, it looks like ng-boost is working fine. And we're getting MSE and our log likelihood. All right, so we aren't going to use Boston. Uh, we aren't going to use those train test splits right now. We're using a really simple train test split at the time at this at this time, and we're not going to use mean squared error. So we'll pretty much use none of that. We're going to take this, move it to the top. Um. and not use any of these. So uh, not too much to use there. So I'm just thinking how to split up our train and test sets. I think we've got everything that we need. Yeah, we've got everything that we need. So let's take a look at our DF roll. This is the most recent data that we have that the, da the, the data frame that wasn't used for, for plotting. We've got some NAs in there. Let's go ahead and drop those NAs. Oh, let's see, what is it? Drop, drop NA. I think that's it. Yep, drop NA. We'll call this DF prep boost. All right, and the training set, so x underscore train. Let's see, so this is going to be the first part of DF prep boost. All 
let's just make sure that we're grabbing our dates that are less than or equal to that train max date variable that we made above. Uh, we don't want sales in there. You know, maybe a better way to do this is just to say what we do want. Yeah, let's do this. Yeah, that'll, that'll be a good X train. Now let's get Y train. test I think that should do it. All right, so NGB regressor. Let's take a look at this some more. So we don't want to do point forecasts, so we'll probably not even use MSC. Distributions, all right. So this is what we want. We want distributions. The options we have are normal, log normal, and exponential. I say we just pick exponential for now. Um, and see how that goes. Yeah, exponential is a distribution that's a it should be one parameter family. I'm not sure what the location scale is. I'd have to read a little bit more. But I think this should work in this case. We don't have we don't have negative val negative values in our data set. Yeah, we'll import our ex this exponential distribution and give that a shot. So we just toss this dist in our ng regressor. And just for clarity, let's just call this NGB EXP for exponential. 
Um, what else do we have here? I'm going to make verbose true. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, verbose equals true. What are the keywords do we have here? Score. Let's do score equals a distributional metric. Log score, I don't want log score. CRPS score, that's what we want. All right, I think we're getting pretty close. Yeah, I think this is good. All right, so we should have our data here. Oh, our tests are all zeros. We don't want that. Let's get our df underscore raw, not what we appended. There we go. Um, yeah, just as a reminder, uh, I did something weird here. I'm not even sure if I need to do this, but for plotting, I added uh, zeros here just so that we could see how um, the lags and moving averages uh, turned out as, as a forecast. Um, so I don't want um, the data set that this was built off of. And so that's what the DF role was. I wanted to go all the way back up to raw and, and get the Y test from that, from that data set. All right, so I think I think this is good. Let's let's give it a shot. Exponential not defined. Okay, I didn't import. CRPS score not defined. Got to import CRPS score. Scores. Okay. All right, we got something working here. Now what happens if we do predict? That length looks like it's predicting accuracies. We could test that. So what is the length of this? 63. Ah. Sixty-three. Yeah, that's giving us accuracies. So that's probably what this um, pred dist is. Let's see what pred dist gives us. A object. So we'll have to figure out how to get our samples from the object, if that's even how this package works. All right, so it looks like predist gives us the parameters of our distribution. Let's take a look at that. So we don't want predict. Uh, well, this could be useful actually. Let's let's just come this out. Um, we might want to glance at that at some point, but we the whole point of this video is to is to do probabilistic forecasting. So let's take a look. So what do we do here? Let's grab the very first item and get params. Scale. All right, that makes sense because the exponential distribution is just scale. Um, so let's actually take a look at 
SciPy stats exponential. Let's pass that parameter into exponential and see what we get. Import that. Um, hmm. Maybe we'll just generate some random variables with that scale. All right, so we'll take this. And let's do expon dot, what was it, R RVS? Oh, there it popped up over there RVS but I want to pass in I want to pass in the scale and I can't remember how to do that right now oh here we go All right, we've got a couple interesting options here that might be better alternatives. But for now, let's just do let's just do a random sample. All right. So I believe we should just be able to pass that in there. going oh this is a dictionary um, let's do get uh, scale there we go um, it's a little ugly having that there let's move it up There we go. So we're just doing a random draw here. Um, the scale parameter of this exponential is 1,483. Sorry, 1,400. Oh no, 14,803. And we're just going to do a couple of random draws. That seems to be checking out. It seems like a. Uh, Good amount. So let's go ahead and do a real draw. A five thousand. We're just gonna call this um, draw. All right. So we should be able to do things now, like get the quantile. Ah, oh, that's not how you do it. Quantile. Um, of our draw, let's get the 50th percent or 50th quantile. Uh, I guess this is NP probably, and we need to import NumPy. That seems large for the median. What was, hmm, 14,803 was the prediction. What was the actual 19,117 and the median here 
is 10,000. Hmm. Well, 90th percentile is 33,000, so that covers it. Interesting. Well, maybe, maybe this isn't the worst. I'm not sure. We'll have to do we'll have to do a deeper analysis here, but this seems promising. Um, so uh, I need to learn a little bit more about NGB regressors and pulling out some of these values. What I'm thinking about doing is passing every single one of these scales to a draw of exponential random variables. And then we can look at the CRPS score of this exponential um, NGB regressor and compare it to maybe uh, a benchmark, something simple. So that's where we're at right now. I think we'll go ahead and end this where we're at. And um, let's take a look at the to-do list really quick before, before we end here. Um, all right, we did some probabilistic forecasting um, by group. This is more this is more cross learning. So it's not by group. We'll just call it probabilistic forecasting. Um, by group would be more if we we're doing univariate time series. And um, that's where we're at so, so far. Uh, thanks for watching.